You have watched over a dozen videos about how to land a job in 2025 and yet you are here. This is because while most advice on YouTube seems logical and inspiring, most of the creators here are privileged. They have a massive network of referrals, went to a prestigious college or graduated at a time where even writing a for loop would get you multiple offers. Seriously, in contrast, I graduated at the peak of hiring recession, where even after finalizing a PPO from a Fortune 50 company, it got rescinded due to whatever restructuring means. Half of the jobs on are scammers trying to farm your personal information or getting their vote done through whatever assignments mean nowadays. Big tech are organizing fake interviews to deceive investors into believing they are expanding while they keep restructuring. And now you're directly competing against these people with experience in fan companies. Chat GPT ain't helping us much either. And I get it. In this video, I'm going to spell out the most practical tactics that me and my friends are using to land interviews in FANG, YC startups, remote European firms, regional MNCs, and small scale startups. Alright, so here's the deal. Your job application is your entry point. Hundreds of people apply to a job and only a handful get interviewed. Once you're there, you'll cook in interviews mostly based on your skills. This makes your resume the single most critical bottleneck of the process. And most resumes are f***ing garbage. 90% of them are the same Netflix clone, weather app or breast cancer detection algorithm. The key differentiator between resumes that get shortlisted and those that don't, in my experience, comes out to be the uniqueness of the project. Not how hard it is or its domain, but the uniqueness. The recruiter is forced to snap out and pay attention to your application. A unique project is memorable and becomes a part of your personal brand. And it doesn't have to make any sense either. All you need to do is write some very heavy hitting words and impactful metrics that no one understands, but sounds like you're building the next iPhone. For example, this is how you make a GPD rapper sound revolutionary. Startups do this all the time. Here are some more examples. The formula is to always use terms like architected, engineered, pure headed or pioneer. Use very specific percentages, include technical acronyms like AST, HNSW, SLA, mention scale numbers like 250k plus, add latency measures and use terms like enterprise grade, production, mission critical. No one will question it, only the winners do it. Having a showcase or demo link to your projects also gives you credibility. If you're interested, I have a few videos on unique project ideas. Second. Be direct and straightforward, meaning no summaries, no useless skills, only write what recruiters need to read. But if your resume has a lot of blank space, it might not be a bad idea to mention your soft skills. One of my friend has added this section in his resume and I can't believe but it actually works somehow. Third, let's talk about the elephant in the room, AI resume scanners. These mindless zombie algorithms only want one thing, their optimization function. And in 99% of the cases, they are looking for a perfect fit for their job role. So what do you do? You create a new resume tailored to every single job application you apply to. Now, I know this doesn't sound very practical given that you need to apply to at least 20 legitimate jobs every day. So here's a more convenient solution in the middle. Most of you guys can actually be hired in multiple roles. If you are a farm stack developer, you can apply for a Python developer, React developer, front end developer, full stack developer, back end developer, software engineer, or even DevOps engineer if you have those skills. So instead of making a new resume for each job opening, select three roles that your skills are best suited to and make resumes tailored to them. While making your resume, go over JDs of that job role and pick up as many keywords as you can and put them all in your resume. If one of the keywords happen to be very niche or one you are not trained in, change its font color to white so the AI resume scanners read them but not the recruiter. This might feel unethical but remember, these companies have been employing delusional tactics to unfairly filter out candidates for years. A fourth point, quality over quantity. Even with extensions like Simplify Copilot, on average it takes two to four minutes to fill one job application. Your chances of getting shortlisted is roughly 1%. Sending 10 tailored applications where you align your projects and skills to the job description often gets more callbacks than 100 random quick apply submissions. Yes, this is more time consuming than the third point, but not in the long run. If the job is looking for a Python developer, then repeatedly using terms like Python software engineer, Python developer, Python expert multiple times has shown to significantly increase your chances of passing ATS. That's just how modern LLMs work. Fifth, if you don't have any experience, it's very easy to fabricate a fake internship. You probably already know that. But what gives you an edge over internship is freelancing experience. If you don't believe me, pause the video and just read this. This is deliberately written at the upper limit of what most people get away with when the actual work was just, I built a few Shopify sites and some chart GPT wrappers for small businesses. Freelance is unregulated and as long as you can demo your code, it's plausible. I highly recommend you to have an active GitHub repo if you go down this line. Again, don't feel bad 
smart for doing this. No company has ever made a billion dollars without lying and deceit either. Capitalism doesn't value hard work, it values ownership. Now even after doing everything perfectly, I ran across extremely hard luck, like God's level hard luck, where even after giving pitch perfect interviews and creating all sorts of fantasies in my head, I ended up getting rejected, anxious and unstable. It's crazy to graduate in 2025. There's a chance that you follow all my steps, become the pitch perfect ideal candidate and still find a hard time in today's world. I cannot promise you a high paying job, but I can promise you a job if you follow this strategy. The real culprit here isn't you, me or the job market. It's your subjective manifestation of reality that is built on media you consume that you assume is the objective reality. This sets your baseline expectations for a job way too high than what the reality offers. If you're someone who's struggling just like I did, you need to chill the fuck down. Accept reality for what it is. And once everything's over within a year or two, you'll realize that the future you imagined isn't even bad. You'll realize that you're a fool ignorant of the gift you had, your time with friends, homemade food, luxury of autonomy and the simple things you always took for granted. And you'll realize that maybe the whole world is a subjective manifestation of your mind and happiness just isn't really what we are taught it is.